Hi and welcome to Lara's weekly analysis of oil, gold and the S&P 500. This is an end of the week, once a week, Elliott Wave and technical analysis of oil first, then gold, then the S&P 500, focusing on the mid to long term picture. This analysis service is designed for investors and for swing traders, not for day traders. At this time it's available to the general public, but in the near future it will be available by subscription only. I'll be offering a once only awesome grandfather rate to earliest subscribers when Lara's Weekly is launched as a paid subscription service. So to make sure that you don't miss out and get your grandfather rate, to be notified click on the link below, go to our website and use the notify me button to give us your email address. Once we've notified everyone on that list of the subscription service being launched, I will then delete all those emails. So I'll only use it once for that purpose only. For the short term for oil, for the main Elliott Wave count, which has been preferred up to this point, price has to turn right here. The bottom line is, while price remains within a best fit channel on my daily charts, assume it's going to keep going up, so either be long or hedge. Classic analysis this week supports a very bullish view for oil. It looks like my main wave count may be wrong, the alternate may be right. If we see a new high above 66.65, that would substantially reduce the probability of the bearish main wave count and increase the probability of my bullish wave count, which sees oil in a huge new bull market. If we see a new high above 74.96, I would have full and final confidence in that bullish outlook. However, if price turns around here before any breach of 66.65, if it remains below that point and moves lower, the target is at 13.39 on the way down, a new low below 55.24 would have substantial confidence in a bearish outlook. Elliott Wave Analysis this week first, Classic Analysis last. This is my bearish wave count, which has been the main wave count for a long time. It sees a zigzag unfolding for a super cycle degree second wave, subdividing 5, 3, 5, cycle C, an incomplete impulse, subdividing 1, 2, 3, 4, must be over here, and 5. Now it is possible, I shouldn't say must, because it is possible, that primary 4 could move a little bit higher. It may not move into wave 1 price territory above 74.96 for oil a new high by any amount at any time frame above that price point is firmly going to invalidate this very bearish wave count and provide a lot of confidence in the very very bullish wave count a target for primary five is it for it to reach 0.618 the length of primary three when there's more structure within primary five specifically when there is intermediate waves one two three and four complete then i'll recalculate it at intermediate degree at that stage toward the end it may change here i'm seeing primary wave four as a relatively shallow zigzag lasting 23 months compared to the very very deep zigzag of primary two lasting 22 months they're both the same structure so there's an adequate alternation but there is some alternation in depth alternation is a guideline not a rule if it were a rule we would have to see it obviously because it's a guideline we don't the fact is you just don't always see alternation but i do acknowledge that there is a problem with this wave count Let's take a look at the end of primary four. We go well, the whole of primary four at the weekly chart level, the end of primary three, the slow down here. Primary four subdivides quite nicely. Five, three, five is a zigzag with intermediate wave C, a complete five wave impulse. There is a little bit of room for upward movement for this bearish wave count though. It can move a little bit higher. It's possible primary four could continue a little bit higher. If it's over here, then we have a target at 13.39. In the first instance, if we see a clear breach by downward movement of this big black channel, then I would have substantial confidence that we've had a high in place, we've had a trend change, and oil is in the next wave down. We haven't got that yet. It's right at a tipping point. Let's take a look at how primary five may have begun at the weekly, sorry, at the daily chart level where this high up here. Is this point here we could have an impulse down from minor one i've checked the subdivisions here at the hourly chart level it will fit quite nicely we could have a double zigzag complete that friday's high for minor wave two the first zigzag of the double is labeled minute w the double is joined by a three in the opposite direction labeled x which subdivides nicely as an expanded flat 
and the second zigzag 535 is labelled minute wave Y and it substantially deepens the correction achieving the purpose of the second zigzag in a double. This is my bottom line for this wave count. While price remains within this channel, my classic analysis is very, very bullish and does not support this wave count. It quite strongly supports the alternate this week. Every now and then, the classic analysis diverges from Elliott Wave and tells us that unless what I had considered a less likely alternate may actually be correct. That's the case this week. While price remains within this channel, assume we're probably going to get more upward movement. If we see a new high above 66.65, this bearish wave count would substantially reduce in probability. I'd have to see primary 4 continuing higher. I think that's quite unlikely. The subdivisions are problematic. But it is possible. I could have some part of it labelled wrong. It's entirely possible. Minor wave 2 may not move beyond the start of 1. Any breach of 66.65 by any amount at any time frame even on a tick chart intraminute is enough to firmly invalidate this wave count at the daily chart level. If minor 2 is over we should see a clear breach of this best fit channel very quickly. We should see a turn and downward movement quite quickly next week. The target if that happens would be 52.20 for the short to mid term for minor 3 to reach 1.618 the length of minor wave 1. At the monthly chart level, this is a very bullish wave count. It looks at the possibility that the huge zigzag is actually over, and if we see cycle B within it over here, rather than at this high, then it is entirely possible that we could have had a huge trend change down here for oil and be in a huge new bull market for a huge big third wave at super cycle degree. Super cycle wave 3 must move beyond the end of 1 to meet that core Elliott wave rule. It has to make new highs above 146.73. It has to move substantially above that point to allow subsequent room for a super cycle wave 4 to unfold and remain above first wave price territory. Within super cycle 3, the first wave at cycle degree would be incomplete. When it's complete, cycle 2 may not move beyond the start of 1, below 26.06. Let's look at how super cycle wave 3 may have begun from this low. At this point it may have begun with an impulse for primary 1, a relatively quick zigzag for primary 2, another impulse for intermediate 1, a double zigzag possibly for intermediate 2, an impulse for intermediate 3 is longer than intermediate 1 but does not exhibit a Fibonacci ratio to intermediate 1. This sideways movement could be intermediate wave 4. Intermediate wave 4 may not move into wave 1 price territory, which has its price extreme at 55.24. Intermediate wave 2 here is labelled as a double zigzag, and so to expect alternation for intermediate 4, we'd expect a flat combination or triangle. They're all sideways moving structures. Let's take, oh, before we go to the daily chart, I'm publishing a daily chart for this one today. Intermediate wave 4 should also, quite reasonably, be expected to be reasonably in proportion to intermediate wave 2. Intermediate wave 2 lasted 17 weeks, and so intermediate wave 4 so far has only lasted 8 weeks, and it looks like it's just about, or just over halfway through. And so I'd expect it's not over yet, and it's probably going to continue sideways as a flat or a triangle. Let's take a look at how it may be unfolding at the daily chart level where intermediate 3 is this point here. This downward wave will also subdivide quite nicely as a double zigzag so it can be seen either as a 5 or a 3 and for those of you who may be watching one of my videos for the first time or for members who are new to Elliott Wave Gold you'll know by now you may not know yet but I'll say it again that's the crux of the problem with Elliott Wave. Sometimes a movement is very obviously a 3 or a 5 but quite often a movement can be seen either as an impulse or a single or multiple zigzag because they have the same look, they have a strong trend. It depends on how many of the little subdivisions within it, at what time frame you count, at what degree. And so when a movement can be seen to subdivide either as an impulse or a single or multiple zigzag, you have to consider both possibilities. It's not always possible to tell with any level of certainty which it is, an impulse or a corrective structure. Here I'm seeing this downward wave as a double zigzag. This may have been a three wave structure for an A wave and now we may have a three wave structure for a B wave of either a flat or a triangle for intermediate four. Within 
both flats and triangles, we can have expanded flats and running triangles where B may make a new price extreme beyond the start of A, above 66.65. If that happens, we can have reasonable confidence in this wave count. If that happens, then we'll expect that prices in an intermediate degree fourth wave to continue sideways for a few weeks. Once B is complete, then C may make a new price extreme beyond the end of A, below 58.13. Now I may have this labelled incorrectly. It may be a single zigzag, in which case intermediate wave 4, or maybe this could be a single zigzag, in which case intermediate wave 4 may be a triangle. But with the way I've labelled it here as two double zigzags, it could only be a flat correction. Now we'll leave open the possibility that one of these may have actually been a single zigzag, and so intermediate four could also be a sideways moving triangle to continue with a sideways chop in an ever decreasing range for a few more weeks yet. If we get a new high above this point, this is going to be my main wave count. And at this stage, classic technical analysis very strongly favours it. I'm going to only quickly go over the monthly chart because I've been over this for the last couple of weeks and it hasn't changed because the month of March is still incomplete. The month of February was complete and overall there was downward movement for that month. The candlestick closed red and the balance of volume was down. It made a lower low and a lower high. There was a long up lower wick though which is bullish. Downward movement during the month of February did not have as much support from volume as the previous month of January which was upward and so the short term volume profile at the monthly chart level is bullish. RSI is not overbought, there's plenty of room for price to continue higher. MACD is bullish and on balance volume is very bullish. What about the short term picture now? We've got this upward movement, which overall has some support from volume. Friday has stronger volume than the previous day, which closed red, but it's not quite as strong as Wednesday, which was a bit stronger. However, the overall trend for the week as price moved higher was support from volume, and so the short-term volume profile is bullish. Look now for support about 64.90 in the first instance. ADX is increasing, the positive DX line is above the negative, ADX is above 15, it is telling us that oil should be in an upward trend and should be in the reasonably early stages. This is the strongest signal that ADX can give when it comes from below both directional lines and then is rising. This tells us oil is in an upward trend. ATR is overall flat, maybe beginning to show some increase again, but overall it's been flat for many weeks. We have two bullish signals here from on balance volume. This trend line was tested three times, so it has some technical significance. The breach here is a bullish signal, a back test of support moving up and away. Another bullish signal strongly supports the alternate Elliott wave count and a bullish outlook for oil. RSI is still in neutral territory, there's plenty of room for price to continue higher. Stochastics is now overbought, but when oil has a strong upward trend, stochastics can remain overbought for many, many days in a row. Only when it moves into overbought and then exhibits some reasonable bearish divergence with price would I expect that the upward trend may be interrupted by a consolidation. We are not there yet. And Bollinger Bands are expanding as price moves higher. This chart is very bullish and quite strongly supports the alternate Elliott wave count. What about the volatility index? A word of caution about this. It's generally assumed within the trading community that volatility and price should have a relationship to each other. That as price rises, volatility should decline. As price falls, volatility should increase. But the math absolutely shows that that assumption is unreliable. And that's the thing about assumptions that I just actually don't understand. When the math shows that your assumption is not supported by the math, I don't think the answer is to discard the math. I think the answer really should be to adjust your assumptions. Here, the correlation coefficient between oil price and its volatility index absolutely shows they do not have anywhere near a reliable correlation. Currently they have a weak positive correlation. Oil price has been moving higher last week, volatility has been increasing. Now, this, 
assumption would say that this is some bearish divergence and may support my main wave count, but I'm not going to read that as such. I'm going to go with the math, which says they do not have a reliable correlation, and I think I'm probably going to stop publishing that volatility index because I just don't think it has any use in analysing this market. The math shows that they just don't have a reliable correlation. I'll be looking out for a little bit of sideways or lower movement to begin next week. It might end about 1344. This little sideways movement could be quite shallow. When it's done, I'll be looking for an upward swing to continue and the target remains at 1367, which is an area of strong resistance. Elliott Wave Analysis first this week. I have five different wave counts at the weekly chart level for gold. To make the analysis manageable for me to publish in a timely manner and digestible for you to understand, I'm just going to publish one bullish and one bearish. In terms of the expected direction for the short term, these don't differ from any of the other unpublished three wave counts. Well, they're not unpublished, they're not just published on a daily basis. And so I'm advising members, particularly newer members if you haven't already done so, to click on the last historic analysis. I link back to it at the beginning of every day so that you can look at those five different options at the weekly chart level. The reason why I have so many alternates at this stage is I expect gold is within a B wave. There are more than 23 possible corrective structures that B waves can take and so we have to be flexible when B waves are unfolding and consider alternates. This wave count is the most bullish of them. It looks at cycle, well, not the most bullish, but the most bullish on publishing on a daily basis. It looks at cycle B continuing as a single zigzag, subdividing 5, 3, 5. Primary C needs to be a five wave structure, so it can only be an impulse or an ending diagonal, and all of this choppy overlapping indicates a diagonal, looks more likely. This may be an ending expanding diagonal. Within an Elliott wave ending diagonal, all of the subwaves must subdivide as zigzags, and the fourth wave within a diagonal must overlap first wave price territory. In order for other analysts to know your meaning when you are expecting that the structure is a diagonal, you should put the trend lines on. And diagonals should adhere pretty well to their trend lines. We've got a small overshoot here and a couple of small overshoots here, but no proper breach. And so that looks fairly okay. Usually diagonals do not breach their trend lines. The trend lines are only breached once the whole structure is complete and the next wave is underway. So we've got a zigzag for 1 and 2, a zigzag for 3, which is longer than 1, a zigzag for 4, which is longer than 2, so the diagonal is expanding, which means the zigzag for 5 needs to be longer than 3. It achieves a quality and length with 3 at 1398.41, which is why I say the minimum requirement for this wave count is for price to reach this po above this point. As soon as it gets above this point, the structure meets that rule, and if the structure is complete, then it could be over. Ending diag sorry, expanding diagonals do not always have an overshoot of the 1-3 trend line. Fairly often the fifth wave ends somewhere midway within the diagonal trend lines. The final zigzag of intermediate 5 should subdivide 5-3-5 five, five. and looking at how long I'm expecting minor wave B to last, we can look at how long minor B lasted within intermediate 3. I'm expecting, in well, the structure needs intermediate 5 to be longer in price than intermediate 3, and so it may very well also be longer in time than intermediate 3. Within intermediate wave 3, minor B lasted 12 weeks, just one short of a Fibonacci 13. And so within intermediate 5, I'm expecting minor B, when at its conclusion, to possibly last a total Fibonacci 13 weeks. If it's a triangle, it could even be longer. It could total a Fibonacci 21 weeks. Triangles are particularly time-consuming structures. It may not move beyond the start of A, below 1236.54, but it shouldn't get near that point. If it gets down fairly deep, then it should find very strong support at the 2-4 trend line. If this trend line would, would be were to be breached by a full daily candlestick below and not touching this trend line, I would probably discard this wave count in favour of the bearish alternate. But for now, we really should have a bullish wave count as the primary wave count because from the slow, gold price has been in a slow, choppy upward trend. We've got a series of high highs and higher lows and another high high here. And so although we've got a sideways chop for the last few weeks, the bigger picture still remains 
gold price is moving higher. While price remains above this swing high, that should be the dominant view. If price makes a new low below this swing low, then we would have a lower low, and we could possibly then have had a trend change. Okay, let's take a look at how intermediate 5 may be unfolding with a high of minor A is this point here, and minor B looks like an incomplete structure. There are still multiple structural options for it, and I'm only going, I'm going to publish two because I think from this high to this low, this downward movement fits best as a double zigzag. This first chart outlines the possibility of minor B unfolding as a flat correction, subdividing 3, 3, 5. The minimum requirement for minute B within the flat would be a 0.9 length of minute wave A at 1359.42. The target would see that minimum achieved, and the target would see minute wave B end within the most common range for a B wave within a flat from 1 to 1.38 times the length of the A wave. Minute B subdividing as a zigzag, 5, 3, 5. So minute C needs to complete as a 5 wave structure. So far, we can see a strong first wave a quick, relatively shallow second wave, a third wave which, if it's over Friday's high, very importantly, would be shorter than the first wave. I'll be looking for a quick, shallow fourth wave and another thrust up for the final fifth wave toward this target to end within this common range. Note that this range allows for minute wave B to make a new high beyond the start of A and it means that the expanded flat would still be incomplete. Expanded flats are really common structures, and the B wave does move beyond the start of the A wave in an expanded flat, and it does that right before a huge, big, strong C wave takes off and moves price substantially beyond the end of the A wave. When, I when minute wave B is complete, then I can calculate a target for minute wave C for you, it would be most likely to end beyond the end of A, below 1303.08, to avoid a truncation. And the invalidation point at the daily chart level is exactly the same as the weekly chart level for exactly the same reason. At the daily chart level, this is another possible structure for minor B. It could still be a sideways contracting or barrier triangle with a double zigzag for A, a single zigzag for B, incomplete, and B, for a running triangle, can move beyond the start of A. About 40% of triangles will do that. 60% of triangles, regular contracting triangles, see B move end before the start of A. And so that would be the most likely scenario for the structure. And then a single zigzag down for C, another one up for D, and a final one down for E. So although this arrow this has this one wave down, it's actually a sideways overlapping chop, probably for a few weeks. It could even see minor wave B total of Fibonacci 21 weeks at its end. At the weekly chart level, this is an alternate idea, or this is another idea. This is the most bearish of my wave counts that I've published. It looks at the possibility of minor B unfolding as a flat correction, subdividing 3, 3, 5 within a flat the B must make a minimum 90% correction of the A wave. Here, primary B needs to reach 1079.13 to be the minimum 90% length of primary wave A, so it has to reach at or below that point. The target would see it achieve that minimum. Intermediate C needs to be a five wave structure. There's some problems with how this is subdividing. If we've got a high in place now at the daily chart level, we'll get to that next. But just before I go there, on all of my five weekly charts, and I'm only publishing two on a daily basis, there is another three, on all of them, if there are problems within the wave counts of rare structures or trying to see subdivisions in a way that doesn't have the best fit, I've noted them on the charts so that members can compare and contrast all of those five different charts that I've published. Here, minor wave B is a triple zigzag. The subdivisions fit, but this is a really rare structure. In my now 10 years of daily Elliott Wave analysis on at least one or two markets and sometimes up to three or four markets, I've only ever seen two of these before. If this is a triple zigzag, it would only ever be the third triple zigzag I've ever seen. Now that's actually, here's a word of caution as well to those who are 
unfamiliar with Elliott Wave, when you come across work online purporting to be Elliott Wave, if you see someone labelling corrective structures with WX, Y, X, Z a lot, be highly suspicious. The subdivisions might fit, possibly, but there may be a much more likely or a more high probability way of labelling the count. I've noticed that it seems to be a labelling that is reverted to by those who aren't really very familiar with Elliott Wave. They haven't been doing it for very long and they may not be familiar with all the rules. If you come across anything labelled W, X, Y, X, Z with within W or Y or Z themselves labelled as multiples, then that violates an Elliott Wave rule. Such labelling is invalid. The wave count would have zero use in predicting the next direction for price because the maximum number of corrective structures within a multiple is three to label multiples within multiples increases the maximum beyond three and violates the rule. And so this wave count has a very, very rare triple zigzag in it, which should necessarily reduce its probability. But like I keep saying, low probability does not mean no probability. And when low probability outcomes do occur, as they sometimes do, they're never what you expected as most likely, because that's exactly how probability works, most unfortunately. And this is a B wave, so we have to be flexible and have alternates and be ready to switch from a main count if it's invalidated to a less likely alternate if price shows us that it must be likely. If we see a new low below 1236.54 then my outlook would immediately switch to very very bearish indeed. A new low by any amount at any time frame below this point is all that's needed to invalidate that first bullish wave count and have reasonable confidence in this very very bearish wave count. At the daily chart level, if we have a high in place and a new downward wave at intermediate degree, it needs to start with a five wave structure. This is a little bit problematic in trying to see this wave down as a five. This movement fits much, much better at the daily and hourly chart time frames as a three. But it can subdivide either way and we do need to consider both scenarios because it's not absolutely certain that it is a three or a five, so we have to consider both. If a 5 is over here, then minor wave 2 may be an expanded flat, subdividing 3, 3, 5. Minute C needs to be a 5 wave structure. We may have 1, 2, 3 incomplete, and then 4, which would need to remain above first wave price territory, and then a final fifth wave up. And so for members who are quite comfortable with Elliott Wave now, you'll notice that this is the price point which in the next week or two is going to start to differentiate this very bearish wave count from a more bullish outlook. It may sound a bit counterintuitive, but in the next couple of weeks, once we get this five up here complete, if we then see a new low below this point, then this rather bearish wave count would further reduce in probability. We'd have to try and see minute C then as an ending diagonal, and it depends on how the third wave subdivides. That would then have to be a zigzag. But if the third wave really only fits as an impulse and then price moves above this, below this point, then this wave count would have to be invalidated and I'd probably have to discard it. We're not there yet though. Let's have a look at some classic analysis. I'm sorry, that might have just been a little bit too confusing. I don't think I explained that very well. Okay, this should be a lot easier to understand. Gold is range bound at the weekly chart level. It entered, mostly entered the sideways chop, although it's got an upward bias. Here, a back around about here, within this sideways chop with an upward bias, it's an upward week which has strongest volume, suggesting an upward breakout may be more likely than downward, and that supports the main Elliott wave count and does not offer support to the alternate. We've got another strong upward week closing at, or not at, but very, very close to the high for the week. It's got support from volume, and so I'd be expecting more upward movement next week. I don't think the bulls are done yet. Another bullish signal from on balance volume. This all supports the main Elliott wave, well, both of them for the short term anyway. Certainly supports the idea that we're going to get further upward movement. Within this big sideways chop, we've got a smaller consolidation, which has got a clearer delineation. Final resistance about 1375 and good strong support in a zone about 1305 to 1310. This area has been tested now in the last few weeks three times quite strongly and price is bouncing strongly up off it. Each time an area of resistance or support is tested and holds, it is strengthened. So this is now quite strong. 
Resistance above is still fairly strong, but not as strong as that support. There's resistance about 1365 and final about 1375. ADX is slightly increasing at the weekly chart time frame this week, telling us we have an upward trend because the positive DX line is above the negative, so that's how we use that one. It's got plenty of room to run too. ATR is overall flat. We might be starting to see some increase this week, but one week of increase is not enough to change the view that overall for the last many weeks it's quite flat. RSI is neutral, there's plenty of room for price to rise further and stochastics is neutral territory also, plenty of room for price to rise further. What about the shorter term picture? Zooming out, here's most of that huge big consolidation I pointed out to you at the weekly chart level and within this it's this upward day and this upward day which have strongest volume. Now this trick doesn't always work, I think I say this pretty much every week but it does be repeating. If you want to figure out what the most likely direction from a breakout is, have a look at which days have strongest volume. Is it upward or downward? If it's upward, look for an upward breakout. If it's downward, look for a downward breakout. That works more often than it fails, but it's not always going to work because there is absolutely nothing in technical analysis which is 100% certain. If there were, I wish there were, if there were, we'd all be multi-millionaires because it would work every time without fail and we could all take a trade with 100% probability. That's not how it works. Markets are much more flexible than that. We've got a really strong upward day for Friday. More support for Friday's upward movement than Thursday's downward well, down red candlestick for Thursday, but overall a little bit less than the day before that, that was upward. So still reasonable support for upward movement, starting to wane a little bit, but not enough to say that it should be done, particularly as prices closed very, very close to the high. And we've got another signal from at the daily chart level, a bullish signal from on balance volume. And so it looks like price is consolidating with resistance about 1360, 1365 and then 1375 finally, support in this zone. We've had swings from resistance to support and back again. Now it looks like we're getting a swing up to resistance. Look out for price to continue onward, upward, into resistance. And if stochastics reaches overbought at the same time, we may expect the end of an upward swing there. RSI at the daily and weekly chart levels, both neutral, plenty of room for price to continue higher. At the daily chart level for the shorter term picture, ADX is below 15, it's too low to indicate we have a trend for the shorter term. That coincides with the idea that gold is range bound, swinging from resistance to support. And we've had a bullish crossover from MACD for Friday. So all of that, pretty much everything on this chart is quite bullish. I'm certainly expecting more upward movement into resistance for next week. When it gets up into resistance, if stochastics reaches overbought and we see some weakness from volume and any bearishness from long upper wicks, I'll expect that that would be it for the upward swing. I have a new target for downward movement which may end Monday or Tuesday, 2565 to 2566. When that's done, look out for an upward swing to develop. Let's have a look at Elliott Wave Analysis first, Classic Analysis last this week. My Elliott wave count sees a fifth wave at cycle degree incomplete, it's subdividing as an impulse. So far we have one, two and primary three is incomplete, it may only subdivide as an impulse. So far it has one, two, three and now four is unfolding at intermediate degree. When it's complete in a few weeks time I'll expect new all time highs for intermediate wave five to complete primary three and when primary three is complete then I'll expect another big multi-week correction for primary four and then more new all-time highs up to one of these final targets. The first target is now looking woefully inadequate, the second target looks much more likely at this stage. Cycle five has passed equality in length with cycle one, it did that about 2500 and when price got up there the structure was incomplete and it just kept on going higher so I used the next Fibonacci ratio in the sequence to calculate the next target, this still quite, quite hasn't been, has not quite been met, sorry, I'm getting a bit tongue tied there. And so I think there needs to be more upward room for the whole structure to unfold and everything to complete. The next target where cycle 5 reaches 2.618 the length of cycle wave 1 would be achieved about 3616. Cycle 3 was a long extension and so cycle 5 also is looking like it's turning out to be a long extension. Cycle 1 was not extended so all Elliott wave rules are met. 
Intermediate 4 looks incomplete. It's probably going to take a few more weeks. Intermediate wave 2 was a deep double zigzag lasting 11 weeks. And so to exhibit alternation, I'm looking at most likely a triangle for intermediate 4. It could also be a flat or a combination. And all of those structures would see it exhibit alternation with intermediate wave 2 double zigzag. Intermediate 4 so far, so far lasted, I think it's 8 weeks. If it continues and completes in a total Fibonacci 13, or maybe even 21, then that would have a really satisfying look. The wave count would have the right look. Intermediate 4 may not move into wave 1 price territory, below 2193.81. This channel is a tentative Elliott channel. I've drawn it from the end of intermediate 2 to this low here and placed a parallel copy on the high of intermediate 3. Price is very, very close to that. I expect we may overshoot it. When intermediate 4 is complete, then I'll have to redraw that channel using Elliott's second technique. Let's take a look at the first possible structure for intermediate 4. The most likely, I think, is a triangle where intermediate 3 high is this point here. I think intermediate 4 is most likely unfolding as a regular contracting triangle with a single zigzag for A, a single zigzag for B, a double zigzag for C completing lower, and then we'll have a single zigzag for D and a single zigzag for E most likely to fall well short of the AC trend line. It looks like the 200 day moving average may have a strong overshoot at the end of minor wave C. Minor wave C for a contracting or barrier triangle may not move beyond the end of A below 2532.69. When minor C is done, I'll be expecting an upward swing from minor wave D to end either well short of the end of minor B or about the same level. If we're looking at a contracting triangle, which is the most common type, then minor wave D would most likely be about a 0.8 to 0.85 length of minor wave C, but we could also be looking at a barrier triangle where minor D would end about the same level as minor B, so that the BD trend line would be essentially flat. It's the same as an ascending triangle in classic technical analysis. It's impossible at this stage for me to tell you if this is going to be a contracting or a barrier triangle. We have to be flexible and open to both options here. And so minor wave D can end about the same level as B. That rule is not black and white. That's the only Elliott wave rule, which isn't black and white. And so once minor C is over and we're expecting upward movement, we won't have a firm invalidation point for the triangle. At the daily chart level, this is the next possible structure for intermediate 4. It could be a double combination. These are really common structures. And for double combinations, the most common of the two structures is a zigzag and a flat, with the zigzag most commonly being the first structure. So this follows a really, really common structure for a fourth wave to unfold as, and it would give nice alternation with the double zigzag of intermediate 2. Now I know they're labelled both WXY, they have the same labelling, but they're quite different structures. Double zigzags are more analogous to single zigzags, and they should have a reasonable slope against the prior trend, but double combinations belong to the sideways family of corrections. They're more analogous to triangles. So they're actually quite different, they have a different purpose. The first structure in the double is a good zigzag labelled minute W. The double is joined by a 3 in the opposite direction labelled X, which is typically very deep. X waves within double combinations are typically quite deep. And the second structure in the double combination may be a flat correction, and it would be most likely to end about the same level as the first structure in the double so that it achieves its purpose of taking up time and moving price sideways. Within minor wave Y, flat correction, we may have a double zigzag unfolding for minute A, and then we'll have a zigzag up or a flat correction, or any corrective structure actually, for minute wave B, which may move beyond the start of A, and then a five wave structure down for minute wave C to move beyond the end of A. The reason why this is a second presented wave count, and I expect it has a lower probability, is it would require an enormous breach of the 200 day moving average for intermediate wave 4 to end. And I think this 200 day moving average around about there is probably going to provide some reasonable support. We may get overshoots, we have a little one here, we had a larger one earlier on a few months ago, that may happen again, but I don't think it's going to be hugely breached like it was during cycle. At the daily chart level, a flat correction for intermediate 4 is still possible, subdividing 3 
incomplete three and then we'd have a five down and again because this would require an enormous breach of the 200 day moving average this looks less likely than the triangle which is why that's my first presented wave count I still think that's the most likely structure for intermediate four but triangles are such tricky structures so many times when I think that one is unfolding and possibly even complete it's turned out to invalidate it itself and turned out to be some other kind of structure usually a combination here we're looking at the possible flat correction for intermediate four the three wave structure for minor b of the middle of it would still be incomplete it still hasn't met the minimum requirement of a 90 percent correction of minor a that would needs upward movement to a minimum at 2838.85 to be achieved minor b may itself be unfolding as a flat correction subdividing three three and then we need a five up to this minimum or above Within a flat, the B wave can move beyond the start of the A wave, and so minor B could make a new all-time high, and intermediate 4 could still be incomplete. Here's a really good example of an expanded flat, subdividing 3, 3, 5. That's how it looks. The B wave moves beyond the start of the A wave. At the daily chart level, this is an alternate. This looks at the possibility that intermediate 4 could be incomplete as a relatively quick, shallow zigzag. There would be a little bit of alternation with the double zigzag of intermediate wave 2, but they're still of the same family, so this has got a lower probability to start with at that point. And now, even though we could still see minor 1 and now minor 2 complete down here, or maybe to move just a little bit lower on Monday to complete it, it just doesn't look quite right because the size of minor wave 2 now looks disproportionate to the small, quick minor wave 1. Now this could also be entirely possible. Corrections can be particularly time consuming, so let's consider this possibility. What this means is when this downward swing is over, and I think we've got a little bit more down to go, the price remains above this point, then look out the possibility of a third wave up could still be in the wings. And so this is a warning that the next upward swing could be particularly strong and swift. If it looks like it's unfolding as an impulse, and if it has good strong support from volume, and it shows a good strong increase in momentum, then the next upward swing could be a third wave. If we see a new all-time high with support from volume and increasing momentum, then this would switch over to my main wave count. But at this stage, because of the brevity here of intermediate 4 and the lack of alternation with intermediate 2, and the sideways hesitant side of this minor wave 2 for all of those reasons this is my alternate wave count I judge it to have the lowest probability that doesn't mean it couldn't be correct sometimes low probability outcomes do occur and by the very nature of probability when they do occur they're never what you expected is most likely that's how it works isn't it okay what about some classic technical analysis at the weekly chart level. We've got a strong downward week closing very close to the 200 day moving average not quite with no lower wick there's the tiniest of lower wicks here but it really is very small. A slight decrease in volume indicates that this downward movement may be lacking in a little bit of strength so look out for it to end but the close very very close to the low makes it look like it's not quite done yet. There's a little bit of room before on balance volume finds support. If we have another downward week and on balance volume comes to touch this yellow support line, I'd expect downward movement to end there. RSI still neutral, still further room for price to fall. ADX now flat or flat to declining, indicating still a consolidation, and MACD still bearish. So this is not a very clear chart so far. It still looks like this is a consolidation within an ongoing bull market, but it's a big time-consuming consolidation. What about the shorter term picture? Again this very strong daily candlestick for Friday closes very very close to the 200 day moving average. Friday has a little bit of support from volume and so the strong close close to the low plus support from volume certainly indicates we're probably going to get more downward movement to start next week. Look out for next support about 2540. ADX is telling us there's a downward trend indicated and on balance volume gives us a bearish signal. RSI is nearing oversold, well it's just just in oversold but 
not really not deeply oversold there's still further room for downward movement and there's absolutely zero divergence between price and RSI at Friday's low likewise stochastics now entering oversold zero divergence between price and stochastics at the last low so I'd be looking for something like this to develop at this last low we had the single bullish divergence and so after this day had closed it looked pretty likely we had a low in place I'll be looking before I expect we've got a low in place for a long lower wick possibly a green candlestick some kind of candlestick reversal pattern possibly a decline in volume on downward movement and either or RSI or stochastics reaching oversold and possibly then exhibiting divergence with price but if RSI moves further into oversold and stochastics exhibits even a single day divergence then I'd expect we have a low in place not quite there yet Bollinger Band's now expanding to support this downward movement and so it all looks quite bearish to start next week supporting the Elliott wave count if my target is wrong it might not be low enough Downward movement for Friday came with a normal corresponding increase in volatility. This is inverted VIX. And so the downward movement from Friday has support from an increase in market volatility. That's bearish. Likewise, a very strong support from declining breadth as price falls. Also quite bearish. So I'm fairly confident in calling for more downward movement to start next week. And if my target is wrong, it may not be low enough. That's all for me at the end of the week with your video update. I hope all of our members are having an awesome weekend.